Okay, so with everything in place, I could just tell you my opinion of how it sounds, but I thought it would be better to give you some hard evidence. So I got a good quality calibration microphone and took some measurements with the old sort of uh, homemade system versus the new Prime Acoustic system. So here is the response of my room with the old treatment. You'll see that I've got quite a dip there at 611 hertz, um, uh, quite a bit of a peak at 141 hertz. In fact, if you if you remember back when I was reviewing the um, the PMCs, I did make comment of there being a bit of a bump, sort of I think it was around about that area. So it's good to know that I, my ears aren't just making things up. That it, <laughs> at least it is there, and uh, then it sort of drops away at uh, about 37 hertz is where the uh, it seems the the bass response sort of falls off, which is fine. So now let's have a look with the new Prime Acoustic treatment in green. At first glance, I mean, it's actually fairly similar. You'll see that the 611 um, peak, uh, sorry, null there has kind of been eased over a bit more. We've still got that 141 hertz peak. I think that's more to do with the shape of my room. I've got sort of a box section where the door is coming into the room. I think that might be potentially what's causing that. And uh, again, the bass sort of drops off again at the, about the same place, 37 hertz, which is um, sort of what I was expecting to see anyway. So looking at those two graphs, you might wonder, was it really worth me getting the Prime Acoustic system? Um, the homemade system I had before gave us a pretty close frequency response graph and it basically cost maybe half of what the Prime Acoustic system cost. So I do understand if you're thinking of that, but there is a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, the homemade system took up a lot more room in my studio. I had three big bass traps sort of this deep um, in, in three of the four corners. Um, in the fourth corner I've got a door so I couldn't put a big trap there. Um, so it was taking up a lot of space and I really do appreciate with the Prime Acoustic system I've, I've gained more space which is nice. This is an, isn't a particularly big room to start with anyway, um, so any extra space is good. The second point is, it did look quite scabby, the, the homemade system. Now, if you're making music uh, sort of by yourself, then it doesn't really matter what it looks like, um, as long as it sounds good. Whereas I'm starting to do a bit more work for clients, um, I'm doing a little bit of sort of mastering work and work for film and, and little bits and bobs, and when people come in, it's nice if it looks uh, like a presentable space, as opposed to sort of this um, kind of bodgy acoustic job. Um, the third and most important point is the time domain. Those frequency response graphs that we looked at only give us the, uh, the, the frequency, they don't give us the, the time domain information. So when I'm talking about that, when you are coming back to clapping your hands in a room, if you clap your hands in a well-treated room, you'll hear the, the sharp attack of the clap and then nothing, it'll be quiet. Whereas if you go into a room with lots of hard surfaces, maybe your kitchen, and give a, a good hard clap, you'll hear the initial clap, but, but then you'll also hear the sort of the, the sound sort of still bouncing around the room after the initial clap. Now the problem is our brains, because those sounds are so close together, our, sound, our brains perceive them as a single sound. So when you're listening in your studio and you've got all these extra sounds bouncing around, then um, your brain perceives that as part of the, the actual music, not as the the sound bouncing around behind you. So I also did some time domain stuff, so let's have a look at those graphs. Now this first graph is actually of the room with no treatment in it whatsoever. I took this in between taking the old treatment out and putting the new treatment in. Now this is what we call a waterfall graph and this gives us the, um, the same frequency information but also the time domain information. So if you look at the red um, the red sort of shape on the back wall there. That's like our normal frequency response graph. So going up the side there is uh, amplitude and then sort of going left to right-ish is the, the frequency response. So we've got the, the bass out to the left and the, the treble out to the right. But then you can see this sort of uh, this rainbow 3D color coming towards us. And so that is uh, the time, to, time domain in milliseconds. So you can see there from this graph that well past 140 milliseconds, I've still got a huge amount of information still bouncing around in the room. Anything from sort of 30 to, 30 to 300 hertz um, is all still um, in the room when basically it shouldn't be. So now let's have a look at the, the old treatment. Okay, you can see quite a vast improvement there, uh, particularly in the sort of mid and high range stuff all gets sucked up. 
um, but there's in the dark blue there, there's still a very strong 30 to 40 hertz um, that is lingering for a very long time in, in the room. Um, so a vast improvement over no treatment, but again, that is a, a, a serious problem there um, that I had with the, with the old system. So now let's have a look at the Prime Acoustic solution. You can see now that there is definitely a vast improvement in the time domain. We haven't got any dark blue, um, any dark blue stuff at all. Everything, even the, the, the loudest, even the longest point is just past uh, 100 milliseconds. Um, there's basically nothing uh, above sort of 300 hertz that I would be concerned about at all. Um, still, we can see that slight bump we spoke about at a, that sits about 140, um, but again, they're, they're very short and acceptable uh, times. So as you can see, there's a bit more to it than what the graph initially suggests. Um, I am, I've been very happy with the upgrade. As far as my perception is concerned, I've definitely noticed an increase in the quality, um, particularly in placement inside of the soundstage. Everything you can sort of, you can tell exactly where everything's positioned and everything just that it just sounds that little bit tighter and clearer. The London 12 comes in about 600 pounds and I think it's a pretty fair price. You can definitely spend a lot more than that on acoustic treatment. I think if you're spending um, sort of around about that plus on your monitoring, then you definitely owe it to yourself to uh, invest in your, uh, your acoustics. Um, you can do it cheaper ways. You can do um, like I did initially and build your own acoustic treatment. Um, it is. It can be a bit of a, uh, like I say, working with fiberglass can be a bit of a horrible job, um, but if you're, if you're hard up for cash, then th there's definitely cheaper ways that you can get good acoustics uh, inside of your room. That being said, though, uh, the, the London 12 does give you something that, uh, again, looks very nice, feels, feels nice and professional, um, and it's a hell of a lot easier to, to use and, and work with uh, and, and install as well. So if you do have the, the money for it, then I think it's probably a, a good investment. So the London 12 will give you a, a fantastic improvement in the sound of your room. Will it give you a professional grade mastering studio type quality? Well, no, no it won't. Um, you can't expect that when you're spending 600 pounds versus the hundreds of thousands that professional studios invest in uh, proper acoustics. What it will give you though is a workable room that you will be able to produce good quality mix downs in um, and have something that's at least good enough that once handed to a professional mastering engineer should be able to give you a very good professional results. So that has been my review of the Prime Acoustic London 12. Um, if you have any questions or comments on this review, please head down to the dspproject.com or if you want to get a hold of me direct, you can send an email to inbox at the dspproject.com. That is all for this week. I'll see you next week.